Hey everybody, Sean Adams here with To Get Seen, and today we're going to go over the first of the nine stages of the client, cyf- client life cycle. The first of the three parts of the main sub first category, the attract category. Today we're talking target, target market. Who is that ideal client? We're going to build what we call an avatar. We're going to figure out that exact person that you're going to sell to. Because when you know exactly who you want to sell to, it makes the language you use, it makes the conversations, it makes everything easier because you know exactly who you're talking to. Now, is this the only person you're going to sell to? No. But it does help you get clarity because it makes you realize, I'd rather work with this person than that. So let's go through a bunch of things that you should keep in mind when coming up with your avatar, so your ideal client, so that you are more effective in selling. The first one is... Why you? Why should they choose you over the competition? What is it that makes you unique? What problem do you solve? What pain do you solve? How are you going to help them with whatever it is that you help them with? And why is it that they should choose you over anybody else who might be able to help them with that? Important to keep that in mind. Next, start making a list of objections. Why wouldn't they work with you? This becomes your greatest selling point. The more you have an answer to each of these objections, the easier it is for you to sell because now for you, you're already preempting their objectives. And so instead of thinking about all the reasons not to sell, you've already bypassed all that. So when it gets to that point of asking them, do you want this or not? They've already said yes, yes, yes to a lot of things instead of having objections and negatives to it. Next, now we're gonna go into specifics. This is where you start really defining the specific person. And the first question, of course, age. Very simple, very easy, but how old are they? And this doesn't mean this is the only person you're selling to, but you're creating that avatar, that ideal client that you're gonna talk to. And when you're writing your copy, when you're creating your website, it's going to be all designed to say, will this ideal avatar like what I'm putting out there? Will it talk to them, will it speak to them? Next, gender, male or female. A lot of people will create two different avatars, a male avatar and a female avatar, and speak to them differently because we all speak, genders are different and you want to speak to them differently. So it's important to know that if you do have a product that is really gender specific, you want to be sure that you're clear on that. Next, marital status. This is important like for me because I'm a slight, I'm a higher ticket item. A lot of times it's important for me to make sure that I know the marital status of the person I'm speaking with because it is a family decision to invest $1,500 to $3,500 a month um, on the marketing of a business. And so I want to make sure that everybody is empowered and knows that. And I'm going to speak differently if I, if I know that they're the sole decision maker versus if it is a joint decision kind of thing. Next, do they have children? Just because your product may not be relevant to children doesn't mean you should know if they have children or not. It changes the dynamic. Do they want to spend more time with their kids? Do they not have time on the weekends because they're running around? Do they only have eight to five? Whatever it is, you got to know kind of what their life looks like outside of whatever you're helping them with to be able to make sure that you've created the right system. Children are a huge part of that. Next, income. How much money do they make? Can they afford you? Can they? Is this within their price range? You need to know how much they're making so that you can speak to them as well. Next thing, education. Education is important as well. You're going to speak to people differently if they have a college degree versus somebody who doesn't have a college degree. It doesn't mean that they're better. It doesn't mean they're smarter. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means you're building this concrete concept of who this mythical perfect person is because everything is going to go towards that. Next, where do they live? What's their location? Location is very important because I'm going to talk to people in the south differently than I'm going to talk to people here on the west coast different than the people in the midwest versus the east coast. It's all... People have different personalities, different communications, and you can get really finite. People in Boston are very different than people in New York. People on the east side are very different than the west side, whatever it might be. You really want to know that location, clean, clear, specific. Here in the Bay Area, do they live in the city? Do they live in the East Bay? Do they live in the peninsula? Do they live in the South Bay? Uh, Do they live over the hill? All these things matter. North Bay, people are unique and different. Where's that ideal client? How are you going to speak to them? Figure out where they're at because that's going to have an effect on kind of who they are. Next, what are their hobbies? What do they do for fun? Because that's where that conversation, getting them to know you, building that know, like, trust factor all plays into effect. And then the last one of the specific pieces is values. What are their values? What's important to them? This could be religious, spiritual, whatever it might be. Um, Are they very passionate about the environment? So then you want to make sure you're not sending them stuff that's a lot of paperwork. You want to be able to give them digital stuff because they want to save the trees kind of thing. 
you want to know what their values are. You want to be able to speak to them very, very effectively and intelligently. I have a client who is a chiropractor who works with churches very heavily in the Christian faith. So I'm, I'm very intentional in using language in that. I'm using my theology degree and communicating with him. I can pull out some of that knowledge and we can have those deeper discussions. It's part of what got him to say, yes, I want to work with you. It's building that no like trust factor. Now, once you have this ideal avatar one or two, you really don't want more than two and you've really, really refined it. The other thing you want to do is come up with the not ideal. Who is your not avatar? Who's the person you don't want as a client? Um, it helps you kind of figure out how you're going to write the language of how you're going to um, promote to people. But it also helps you know that if that description, this I not ideal comes in, you may be more hesitant to try to close a deal with them because you don't want the problems that are going to go with it. So you want to be able to get clarity on that. If you do all of this, you're going to have real good clarity on who that ideal client is. Next, we're going to talk about that attracting interest. How do you get their attention so that they know you're the right person for them? That's going to be our next video on Monday. So make sure you take some time this weekend, go through and figure out who that ideal client is. It's going to make a huge difference for you. And it's going to be really, really productive and effective when it comes to figuring out the right marketing. Hope that helps. Sean Adams, To Get Seen. See you.